I just got preview access to the brand new Microsoft Bing chat. Now I have no interest in seeing whether I can get it to fall in love with me or stalk me or any of those other things. Let's give it a test in a business kind of use case. Can it help me write a business case? How good is it at reaching out and searching for things that are very current on the internet? How specific can I get with that? And how does this new concept of it working in context with search all come together? Let's find out. First thing I notice as I come into Bing is this big new search box here, great big paragraph where I can put something in and I'm asking it to write me a business case. Now this is the part I'm the most excited about, to be honest, I'm getting search results down the left hand side, but on the right hand side, I've got the chat answer. So this is two things in one and you'll notice a couple of things in here. Firstly, it is actually interacting with the internet, which ChatGPT can't do. So it's giving me references and links to where it's finding that information. However, I asked it to write me a business case and it's not doing that. It's actually telling me how to write a business case. So, all right, it's giving me some prompts. Can you show me an example? So that chat bot kind of experience where it's suggesting the next part of the conversation is actually also really interesting and useful. And so it's gone ahead and given me an example, which is drawn from somewhere and it's given me the reference to where that's come from. All good, still not writing it for me. Let's do a quick comparison here of what happens when we put this into ChatGPT, which we're all a bit used to, exactly the same prompt and uh, yeah, that's actually writing, <laughs> writing the actual business case. I'm doing this a week or so after Microsoft had a whole lot of controversy around the first preview. So I don't know how much they've pulled this back or whether this will change in future. But the time of recording, that's what it's doing. And it's interesting as we go through this to see how many things it actually won't do for me. Let's have a look at how it goes with some online research. This is actually a really, really good use. I'm asking it here to compare Salesforce versus Dynamics in my search for a CRM system. And rather than just giving me the answer and I accept it or not, it's actually giving me the references, the sites that it's come from so I can decide or use the other search tools that I'll show you a bit later to decide if these are useful or not. Definitely no bias towards the Microsoft system here, by the way, and I'm still not convinced about some of those references, but that aside, which one do you recommend it prompted me? So I click the button and I'm sorry, I'm out. It will not recommend. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so I'm going to ask it something different, link me to the most recent article, but nope, it's over. It's not having comments, not talking to me anymore. This might be to do with where it's at right now in preview mode. Uh, in any case, my only choice here is to sweep that little broom, new topic and start again. Let's try something else in context now, Microsoft annual report. I'm still in the chat mode here because I'm quite liking that. I could have switched back to search mode. So it's helped me to find it. I've got a nice clear link here, which I can click through. That's a pretty good experience. Now I'm going to review this report online and there's quite a lot going on here. There's a, a lengthy report. Maybe I don't want to read all this or I don't have time to read all this. This is a really cool feature. This little Bing button, this is in a developer version of Edge, which you can download to try this at the time of recording that this is all in preview. And now I've got the chat in context in theory. Didn't always work quite as well as this, but in context of what's going on in the other window, you'll see some slightly less good examples of this as we go through, but this is what it looks like when it's working well. I've asked it to summarize this article for me and here we go. This is giving me a summary of what's going on, which seems to be a pretty reliable summary again with those footnotes back into what's going on. It's also very good at continuing a conversation with me, prompting me for things. You'll have seen these kinds of prompts in some of the other Microsoft tools. If you're using Outlook and Teams and things that it prompts you with, with autoresponders. But this is a very chatbot like experience that we've seen throughout a few of the examples now that I do actually quite like. And I've got a great example of that coming up where I'm looking for some more detailed requirements a bit later in the video. So now I'm asking it to create a one paragraph summary of what's going on here for my non-technical colleagues. I'm giving it that persona. I want something really quite specific here. Mm, quantum computing, edge computing. I, my, I've lost my non-technical colleagues. Yes, I don't really think it's done an awesome job of that. How can I learn more about these trends? It's actually able to give me more research and more things to follow up. So I think it's very good at that area of reaching out and finding other sources and things on the internet. So far, not thrilled with the creation capabilities that, that it's given me, but there is this little compose feature. So let's give that a try instead. 
Now I'm starting here assuming I'm still in context and I'm going to say write an email to my boss saying that he should read this report. You'll see here I've got uh, professional, casual, enthusiastic, informational and funny tone and I can choose a paragraph, email, blog post or ideas and then the length of it. So I'm going to go a bit casual. This is a sort of a, just a casual email and um, I'm going to choose my length and write the draft here. Now I'm expecting it's going to write something about this report but look at this. I wanted to share an interesting report that I came across that's about customer satisfaction. It's based on a survey of over a thousand. This has nothing to do with anything actually. This has nothing to do with this report. Also has nothing to do with any, it's just completely made this up. So I don't know what's going on there, but um, yeah, that's a fail, <laughs> frankly. Um, I, I don't know. I just could not possibly use that. It's just given me a bunch of random suggestions. Let's try the insights feature over here and see what that's doing. Quite like this. It's giving me some key phrases, some Q&A, some information behind the site. So if you're reading something and you wanted to know the credentials of what you're reading, I think this part could be really good. Let's give the other chatbot section another chance here. Write a blog post about this. I'm sorry, but I cannot write a blog post for you. That would be plagiarism. Very interesting. So this idea of being connected to the internet and writing these things, some good stuff in summarizing, but the creator mode still failing on us. How about something that is about something really current? What are the trends in business applications in 2023? Because you cannot do this with ChatGPT. This is pretty good, actually. I'm pretty much across the trends in business applications, sustainable, eco-friendly operations, reconfiguring supply chain, AI, human employees. That's exactly what I'm testing out right now. Uh, having a purpose, the changing employee experience. Honestly, that's a pretty good cap. Um, and again, I could click through on all those references. So that's not bad. Let's see if we can go a level more specific. What are the new features coming in Dynamics 365 sales? Now, first off, it's referencing the Wave 1 release, which is only, you know, three or four weeks ago at the time of recording. Recording, so that's very current. How's it going? Enhanced sequences or actionable AI, updated form layout. Yeah, you, please keep watching my videos that summarize all of this. I mean, this is good, but you know, <laughs> I might be out of a job. So I have to do some eco surfing at this point. Come on, what does Lisa Crosby think of this? And the first thing it's done is referenced a LinkedIn article that I wrote maybe three years ago. That's bad. So I've given it more context again to try again here. What are the trends? Now, what does Lisa think are the top features? And this time around, okay, this is better. According to her YouTube video titled Dynamics Wave 1, yes, her top features are none of those things. Those are all like more than a year or two ago. It's got the right link to my website, uh, or link to the YouTube video there. So it's really preferencing blogs, LinkedIn and websites over videos, which is interesting. I want to watch her video. You can enjoy it here. There's no link. Tell me more about Barhead Solutions is interesting though, because it's picked up. That's where I work from my LinkedIn profile. It's prompting with that. So let's see how it goes in the context of a video, because I've seen some other YouTubers talking about the fact that you can kind of chat while you're watching a video about the video. So let's see how good it is with that. So what, what am I saying here? And it's done a pretty good scrape of the video description. OK, great, but I probably could have read the video description, so not a heap of value in that. Let's uh, test it a little bit more. What is her top pick? Now, I've got a transcript on this video in multiple languages. I'm, you know, very kind of spend time on, on those kinds of things with my videos. I did call out my top pick for this at least once or twice, a couple of things in there that it could find. You'll see it's struggling a bit here. It's trying to find searching in different ways and it can't really do it. And then it's going to come back with saying that it can't find a transcript. So that's interesting because there is a transcript. Um, and it's also saying that this is my top feature, which it really isn't. So that's not really interacting with my video at all. Let's go a step broader than that and ask it something else about, you know, the author of this video in relation to what's going on here to check out some credentials. What's her most watched video? This is this is interesting. <laughs> so what it's done again, it's found my LinkedIn post that I wrote at the end of 2022 and said that my video is got 1.1 million views. I wish that was true. The numbers are right. There's a one and a one and a one, but uh, orders of magnitude are completely wrong. So uh, fact check your AI. That's just 
That's hilarious and worrying. So let's give it a go at uh, clicking and saying, can you show me that video? And again, what it's doing here is really relying on that LinkedIn post. I think I can show you the video. Here is the link, um, but that's not actually a clickable link. So firstly, that's annoying. So I've grabbed that link to see if it's actually picked out the right link. And we will copy and paste that up into my browser here. And we discover that that video is, that video is available. <laughs> I can't up here if you want to watch it. I don't know what's going on here. I think it must have found my LinkedIn post and it's got the masked link from LinkedIn. But anyway, that that whole experience was not awesome. Let's try a more technical thing now, create a data model. So now I'm interested in an asset management app. I did this one in ChatGPT in my other video and it came up with a data model straight away. So firstly, I'm giving it something very specific. It's answering what Dataverse is and giving me some information. What kinds of assets? OK, refining my question. Still not actually giving me the answer I'm looking for. And I thought my question was pretty good, but again, still learning how to interact with this particular chat. What does it look like and how do I create it? Uh, again, that's just wrong. Create a data connection using C data. Like that's just completely rubbish. So we're going to give that one a <laughs> thumbs down. We'll give it another try. Suggest a data model asking the question in a different way to see if I can get what I'm looking for here. And here we go. A possible data. All right, this is better. A table for assets. A ta this is what I was looking for. So it's taken me a few goes. But again, some of that fact checking along the way there was some weird random things that would not have helped me at all. Again, it's going to sort of ask me some more questions. Does this data model suit my needs? Yes, that sounds fine. But how do I actually go about building it? Are there any examples or tutorials? I was fishing here because I know that I've created a tutorial to to do this online. I was testing again to see can it actually reach YouTube at all? I'm not convinced that it can. So here we go. Here are some examples. And this time, oh, we have got a video here. That's a YouTube video. So that's good. There's a template. That's a pretty good list, even though it doesn't include my video. I'll forgive it. Oh no, this is by it. <laughs> this is where I work. I did not know. I did not know that's where I was going to go. Um, all right, so let's check out the credentials here. So again, this in context of YouTube, it's able to do this. And I think I think this in context is quite good. If you're looking at anything and you want to know more about what's going on behind the scenes here, uh, didn't do so well on my video. But this idea of sort of being able to go tell me about this organization, tell me about that. It's a, it's a bit more of a web presence kind of thing. How about something even more specific now? What if I am looking for Power Apps licenses? I want to do some stuff. I don't really know what I'm looking for. And I have a bunch of questions. And these are questions that come to me quite frequently. So let's give the chatbot a bit of a test. So first up, it's given me some suggestions there of what I could do with Power Apps. So again, those in-context suggestions in the chat are really good. Uh, it's giving me some information here that I can click through and have a look at an expense report sample template. That's great. That's what I'm looking for. For. Is this free? That's the question everyone always asks. So now we're having a look at pricing and licensing, which is something that ChatGPT is a complete fail on. So I'm really interested to see how we go here. Power Platform Licensing FAQs. That's a site I use a lot. Uh, we've got another one here on pricing and licensing that looks good. But uh oh, 2021. No, don't ever look at licensing. That's that old. It will be wrong. But let's go to the first thing that gave me here because that's a pretty good start. So help me choose a license so that I can build that expense management app for 10 users. So asking in a very specific question here. And let's see how we go with this answer. So how to choose a power apps license. You need to consider how many apps you want to build. There are two types of apps per user to some. OK, so that's pretty comprehensive. However, if you plan to build more apps in the future, it might be more economical to buy per user. Yeah, actually, Thank you for that. That's useful. That's telling me something I didn't think to ask. I like that. I want to build more apps in the future. In that case, here are your options. And I'm like, OK, well, I'm making my business case here. What are the other things that would make the cost worth it? What's the value of this? And again, it's going to go away and find these examples. Now, I know this is Microsoft stuff, but it was pretty hopeless searching for the dynamic stuff before. So I don't think that's biased at all here. I think it's actually just very good at working with text in context. It's not so hot on the video, but pretty good on reading the web pages and answering that in context. So I've jumped across here. I'm going to give this Compose another chance here. Write me a business case to get Parap's premium licenses. Let's go professional this time. And I want to write a paragraph. And 
that's pretty good actually this is genuinely in context it's picked up on everything I've got so where the one where I was reading the annual report was a complete fail this one is good so I thought I'd give it another go how about we write an enthusiastic short email this time and let's see what it comes up with so I hope this email finds you well perhaps as a low code platform uh, one of the use cases that I think would be here um, the good news is that PowerApps Premium Licenses, oh no, now it's kind of channeling somewhere between a little bit of an over-enthusiastic over sales rep that sounds a bit spammy and an internal person. So it's kind of got its context all a bit wrong there. So one success and maybe one half success there on the Compose feature. Now, while we're talking Compose feature fails, and I did promise you a hilarious story out of this. When I accidentally found that Barhead video, I was like, oh, I have to email Ken, my boss, and tell him this is hilarious. And so I was right there in the Compose feature. And so I thought I will give this a go because this is really funny. Now, warning here in context with AI, and you might spot before I did what it is that I did a little bit wrong here, but I'm sharing this with you because it's funny. So write an email to my boss to tell him I accidentally found our video. Do you see what I might have done wrong there when I was <laughs> recording a demonstration for YouTube? Um, I'm going to go with a funny tone because honestly, I was just feeling it. Uh, it's a short email. I'm going to give it the name of the person that I'm addressing as well here, and I'm going to generate the draft. Now, in terms of making things up that are not in context, remember, I'm talking about asset management. I've done all these searches around asset management at this time. Um, it's found the video of us singing We Are The Champions at the company retreat, which is apparently on YouTube and has 10,000 views. Now, I mean, I don't mind a bit of karaoke, but that didn't happen. It didn't. It's, it's just completely made that up. Now, I mean, that's funny, but also what is it doing? Like, oh, like seriously, what is it doing? And I switched it away from funny and switched it on to a like casual mode. And this time it said that there was here's a Google Drive link to a video from another song. It's just, I, honestly, that whole compose feature, that's a bit of a worry. I'm just going to steer clear of that unless I'm writing complete fiction. Um, I hope this has been useful. This is really just very early days for the Bing AI and so I'm going to be following this space because I think it affects all of what we do. If you're interested in seeing what I did with ChatGPT uh, for a bit of a comparison of the tools, check that out here. And you know, I've still got new release videos coming. Here's the most recent one here on Dynamics 365. Thank you for watching.